the service today. This is one of our summer Sundays as we are in the midst of this series of services in which we are enjoying more relaxed rest. We had the opportunity to have special fellowship time last Sunday with an ice cream social following our worship service in the fellowship hall. And our next fellowship event will be next Sunday, August the 8th, which is also our back to school Sunday service. It will begin at 10.30 a.m. Please take note of that, and we'll post the service around that same time next Sunday if you are participating online or YouTube. Following the service on next Sunday, our fellowship time will be a back-to-school cookout. We remind all our worshipers, those who would like to be a part of our uh, school supply drive, which also will include our preschool families, that those supplies need to be brought to the church no later than that Sunday, which is August the 8th, for the school supply drive. We hope that you can join us either online, YouTube, or worship with us here next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. That's August the 8th. But we welcome you today to this service as we continue our focus on Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus beginning with the first verse of the fourth chapter through the sixth verse, and then we will move to the 25th verse through the 32nd. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. There's a spirit of love in this place. Just as precious as the earth, there's a spirit of love in this place. Oh, alleluia, sing alleluia, we bless your this fourth chapter of Ephesians, particularly the verse which is the third verse, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, and reminisce as I would read it about the 1960s. You know that kind of vague 
warm glow that surrounds that whole sense of peace. As we remember those chants, the symbol of peace that was so dominant during the 1960s. And as my eyes would dance across the words there, it was as if they kind of floated up into a world beyond the one we know. But now when I read these words, they shake me. They stop me. They cause me to consider where we are as the body of Christ, the world we are living in, and certainly where we are as the United Methodist Church in these days when we know there is great concern and upheaval with even in our precincts, our denomination. And so, I go back to Martin Luther King, remembering that when one reflects upon oneself and one's calling in connection to being authentic with that call, that often there are risks that must be taken and we and ourselves are forced to that place where prophetic action while they may be unpopular, are called for. And when I remember Martin Luther King and others throughout the history of the church, Martin Luther with the Protestant Reformation, then I am challenged. I don't find these words, Ida Down, ease words, maintain the unity of spirit and the bond of peace. But rather than them being comfortable words, they become the proverbial rock that gets inside of my shoe. And I have no choice but to walk around with it as it challenges and irritates me. Maintain the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Now Paul is speaking to the church at Ephesus in relationship to what a mature church should look like. And so if we're thinking about what it is for us to grow into the likeness of this mature church, we must find these very words of Paul. Maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace as challenging words, as words that are like that rock that get stuck in our shoe, that we walk around with and finding it to irritate us and to challenge us. We know as we look at the world around us in this nation, we might very well say so much for unity. We don't even seem to be able to understand as a society our responsibility, not only for ourselves, but that that we have for one another in relationship to being mature enough to get vaccinated so that those who are most vulnerable will not suffer in the midst of this pandemic. We know that these issues have circulated around a time in this nation of great division and disunity in relationship to politics. But I would say that it moves far beyond that that these very concerns that we bring to this service this morning, that we find ourselves in the midst of, because after all, we do live in this world while we're not to be of this world, Jesus says. Then that warm glow that we so often associate with peace begins to dissipate, and we are challenged. Maintain that Holy Spirit 
and unity of spirit in the bond of peace. So thus, we find ourselves in the world we're in with our stomachs often in knots. Certain words, certain inflections, certain voices begin to make our heart beat so that we feel the pulse and our fingertips because we are concerned, we are upset by what we see around us, by the lack of unity, by the divisions, by the breaking down of the social fabric of this culture and society. And so, the disunity that is so evident around us can certainly be reflected in the life in the ministry of the church. Because after all, we are in this world. And the church is made up of human beings. The disunity that I think has surfaced more and more in current decades was there all along. It was just hiding in the corners. Certain things and certain events, and I would say certain things that have happened in our national life since 9-11, have wrapped up that disunity. So that it seems to me that when the light gets turned on, as it has been in current years on the reality that we're in, then the mess that we're in becomes more apparent. It becomes more apparent that, after all, we're not, we're not the mature church that we've been called to be, that we're not mature in our Christianity and in our servanthood as members of the body of Christ. And instead, we find ourselves divided up into tribes when we're called, as the scripture has reminded us today, to be one, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now, a current book that has become kind of a guide with the whole issue of peace is entitled The Anatomy of Peace. We have a diagram which we can reflect upon in a slide that you will see now that reminds us that as we think about this whole notion of peace, and I remind you that its roots are in the concept of shalom, the Hebrew word shalom is about wholeness, wholeness of mind, wholeness of body, wholeness of spirit, wholeness of relationships, which are very much a part of what it means to maintain the spirit for the bond of peace. This diagram reminds us that as we move toward this reality of living more peaceably with one another, that first of all, we have to get out of our separate boxes. We have to get out of the box of how we think, and we have to be intentional in being peacemakers. We have to approach relationships with the intention of having a heart at peace. We individuals have to be at peace. You cannot be a peacemaker if you are warring in your own spirit. And as we begin to move into more maturity in the way that we are living out our life in Christian community, in the very city we live in, in our nation and world, then we have to do what Paul says in verse 25. 
Put away falsehood. Let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. And as we move in that direction, we must build supporting relationships. Supporting relationships around that person that we are somehow in tension or conflict with. We must, in fact, see ourselves in relationship with that person as those who around that person see themselves in relationship to him or her. And we must allow those persons to become a bridge between ourselves and that individual so that we can meet one another in a safe place. And as we meet one another in that safe place, we may find that there are still resentments or angers. And that reality is a reality that we have to confess and face and be honest about. The scriptures say, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not make room for the devil. And as we move toward building relationship with a person that we differ with, that means that we begin to listen to that person, to listen to them. That does not mean agreeing with them. That does not mean that what they hold to, that we hold to, but we are open enough to that person that we listen to them and we learn about that person's world. We learn about how that person sees the world and why that person sees the world as that person sees the world. And as we listen and as we learn, we also share, we also teach, We communicate with one another. We become fellow learners, if you will. We become disciples, if you will, to the one who is the Prince of Peace. And as these things begin to go in the right direction, then there will be a correction that we will see that will begin to take place. It will not take place immediately. It will take time. It takes time to build relationships. But that will come. That will come because we are allowing the Spirit in. We are allowing that Spirit in so that we can maintain the bond of peace. Let no evil talk Come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up. Not tearing down, building up. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven. Now, this represents a shift. The boulders that we have built up began to roll away, and as they roll, From out of the rock pile, there will be a kind of avalanche that will seem to take place. But in the place of that avalanche, the work of the Spirit can be done. And we can learn how to live with one another in peace and harmony. And the wolf will lie down with the lamb. And there will be peace. harder, rougher, truer kind of peace than this. I remind you, it was this.
Venus, the Orans, extended by the risen Lord when he said, peace I give you, not the peace that the world gives you, but my peace. The peace that Paul says passeth all human understanding. And so, I think we have to come to that place where we understand that the work of the Spirit's unity isn't so much about keeping us all happy with one another as it is tearing down the walls we have built so more people can get in to the body of Christ. Because as long as we're warring, the world doesn't want to get in. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, may it be so. May we be tied to each other in deep, uncomfortable, grace-filled ways to become the mature church Christ has called us to be. May it be so. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Everybody knows trials and temptations. Everybody knows heartbreak, isolation. We can lay our burdens down. Lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus. He's to rest my sins are gone. I see grace on. Everybody has fears, everybody has worries Everybody knows sorrow, devastation We can lay our burdens down Lay our burdens down What a friend we have in Jesus Is my home. And forever and ever is hard is my home.